Hello everybody, Alchemir here with another video. Today we are going to be going over, or in this video, we are going to be going over the PTS patch notes for the final week for update 40. Um, so basically this is not going to be much of anything. It's just kind of preparing things to go live um, and things like that. So let's just get into it. All right. Um, there's no events to, that they're testing the, this week, obviously. Um, known issues. Please note that fixes for all known issues listed below will be included in an incremental patch after update 40 launches on October 30th. So keep that in mind, too. Um, the uh, For Gardener of Seasons, the delayed heal of, of budding does not currently proc the minor heroism of of spring or plant area of fall. Monolith of Storms, this set currently ignores line of sight checks and can damage enemies through walls. And the damage from this set does not currently aggro enemies. Nobility and Decay, using Bitter Harvest to consume your beautiful corpse does not currently refresh beautiful corpse, even if beautiful corpse is off cooldown. And Reawaken Hydrofont, Traveling through an apocryphal gate multiple times may remove the visual effects from reawakened hydro hydro font buffs. I don't know why that was such a difficult transition. <laughs> All right, combat and gameplay. Um, Templar fix an issue where the visual effects were not properly displaying for puncture uh, puncturing strikes, spear shards, or their morphs. Class sets, Basalt Morded, uh, Blooded Warrior, the K set, fix an issue where equipping this set only on your back bar would allow you to constantly refresh Obsidian Stance while bar swapping. Fix an issue where acquiring my, my major heroism from another source could prevent this set from functioning. That could be a problem, considering you get this pretty much everywhere. Gardener of Seasons. This set now grants Herald of Spring automatically after equipping the set and no longer has a transition state requirement. You transition to Harbinger of Fall whenever you cast any healing ability while bracing, actively holding Bond. Rather than uh, requiring you to cast two non green balance class abilities, uh, reduce the duration of Harbinger of to of fall to six seconds down from ten. And Harbinger of Fall now applies major cowardice rather than minor uh, major maim. Interesting change. I mean that's that's uh, still kind of blah about the set. But that's alright. Just Alright, Monolith has learned fix an issue where this set could reveal stealth or invisible enemies. Now, I will say um, there was a known issue last PTS patch where you couldn't crit, as shown in the video that I posted. I will say that they have fixed it, and the set does now crit, too. So that was fixed. That's just not in the notes. So, uh, Cleaver... Fix an issue where Malevolent Offering and its morphs heal and damage done to the caster were not affected by this set. Fix some tooltip errors with this set not properly displaying val um, values. Wrath Sun reduced the maximum stack count of Sunlight to 40 down from 50. Fix an issue where Sunlight could continuously re refresh while at maximum stacks in some cases. Now I did, I did actually test this set and I made a video for it. I won't spoil it, but I'm not a huge fan. But I'll show you. Um, but check, you, you'll have to check out the video to see why. But it, it's, yeah. Anyway. Moving on. Endless Archive. The bread and butter of this set. Of the, yeah, this set. This update. Uh, general players in, in process of being removed from Endless Archive can no longer interact with the reset hourglass. Relocated someone's promise book to a more accessible location portals to the unknown you can you no longer need to unequip and re-equip the 
Crypt Cannon Vestiments Mythic Item after completing Halafels <laughs> Butchery. Uh, quest item to... Why are all these names just so stupid? Denunzio. I'm going to call you that. No longer appear in unre unreachable stages. Verses and visions. Visions uh, present in Mora's Boon UI will now appear correctly in all languages. Again, I don't know if they change this. I haven't really done endless archives since week two. But does it show you like when you ho hover over the UI what those numbers mean? Like I know what they mean, but like I forget. And I'm like, am I on stage four or am I on, you know, or am I on cycle four, but stage three, am I, on, you know, yeah, I just, my brain just looks at that in flat line sometimes. St uh, stages, fabled infusers and fabled spell thief monsters will now correctly attack your character when your character is close. When Malkahest appears, he will... He will now always appear in the correct location in all stages. Cycle bosses, Malkest, and the filers now correctly appear before and after. Cycle bosses, cycle boss battles in Arc 2 and beyond. When fighting Lord Warden Dusk companions now use the shadow portals and are no longer able to be hit by Shadow Nova. Okay, they fixed the achievements. They've edited several achievements. Um... Probably because they removed them, um, they they removed the stage, which kind of screwed things up. Okay, so they didn't make any sort of f further adjustments to um, rewards. Now, I feel like I was kind of in the minority when it comes to really liking the fact that they added Overland set it's to the reward system, and I know that a lot of people have the Overland sets. You know, they're like, I already have all these, like, in Sticker Book. Well, it's a big game. Not everyone does. You know, and you'd be surprised just how much, you know, you can get if, you know, I doubt anyone is suffering in terms of spaces in your guild trader. But those sets, those Overland sets, can actually get net you some decent money. You know, not only that, but you can break you can break them down from mats and sell the mats, and those get you good money. So that's just one of the reasons why I was excited about it. And that, I mean, even so, someone like me, I've been in the game since beta, and when Sticker Book came out, I had already done the base game like probably like forty times. <laughs> you know, and I really, really, truly do not want to do it again. After I leveled my Necromancer, it's just. I don't want to go through the base game again. Um, it just doesn't excite me anymore. So I think in terms of how empty my sticker book is, I'd say the emptiest part of it is um, is probably the Overland areas, like the, the the base game areas, like you know Grotwood and and Ordon and and you know Reapers March and the Rift and e you know East March. I mean, I just don't go there anymore. Unless there's some event that's tied to it, you know. So that's the reason why I was excited. It was mainly sticker book, and then I can sell some. Uh, I and I can either sell the sets that are pretty good, like spinners and spriggan and things like that. And I can also break break these down for mats, and I can sell the mats, which bring me, which bring me money. So that's the only reason why I was excited. And that and it it, it kind of was at least some form of acknowledgement that the reward system sucked. And it still does. And I really hope they address it when it goes live. I'm not going to hold my breath. All right, so housing, fix an issue where uh, Flande Damari wouldn't let you complete the conversation to get your free in-room in Daggerfall, Vocal Guard, or Davin's Watch. Fix an issue with the Apocrypha Geyser Inc. furnishing where it could look incorrect from far away fix an issue where the shrine of develop furnishing where your character would sink into it if it was turned upside down fix an issue where two furnishings were called necrom lamppost elegant the larger of the two is now called necrom lamppost metal fix an issue with the recipe for who cares so that's really it 
Um, be interested to see what gets adjusted when it goes live. In terms of how I feel about the NS Archive, I really don't really know who this new thing is for. Who's the audience here? You know, someone like me, I'm a casual player. You know, I, you know, I, I play when I can, but typically it's only on my days off, which is usually only about like one day a week where I can play for a couple hours, you know, but usually I'm only jumping on to, you know, grab my hirelings mail, you know, pick up my daily reward, maybe do some writs, maybe some daily, maybe some of the daily or work on the weekly endeavor, but probably not, you know, and then, uh, you know, that's, that's really it. Maybe do some easier things, like if there's a daily quest I want to do, or maybe PvP for like, you know, like 10, 15 minutes or something, just to get my itch, you know. Other than that, I just log off, and I'm like, who was on this archive even for? Because people who are dying for harder content, you know, they have to they have to go through so many stages just to get to their their part of this you know, where they're having fun. And then someone like me, it's like, all right, so what, what What I'm gathering from feedback and what, you know, is basically past arc two, probably not for me. And then even getting to arc two is probably going to take a while, even with the elimination of a stage, you know, and the rewards do need to increase more. We need more, you, you, that new currency fortunes, we need more of that. You know, I mean, uh, they just really need to make this appealing. You know, make this more appealing for everyone. Because as of right now, I know a lot of people aren't going to bother with this. I'm going to, I'm probably going to loop arc one and two if i can get to arc two if i have the time until i get enough fortunes to buy some things i want in the achievement vendor and i mean not the achievement vendor, the furnishing vendor after that i'm done i'm never gonna go in here again you know i might i might try to farm the the sork monolith set just because i find it interesting but other than that i'm done I'm pretty sure I can buy those class sets in the in the guild store, guild trader. So even then, I'm like, half these sets are garbage. I mean, Monolith is not going to be selling for a lot if you can sell it. So yay me, I guess. Also, from what I've heard, they might be releasing at some point, um, like the style style i don't know what the, like style material for the class sets so i would say hold on to those hold on to the class sets if you you know if you think they're decon and wait for the style the style material that they're made out of to come out and that and then decon it and then sell the style material because that will go for more money that will go for a lot of gold so just Little hint, hint, nudge, nudge. The ability of decay is still garbage. It's still like the cooldown needs to go away. I like Monoliths of Storms, but I see what people are talking about about it. I really do. You know, I, I see that in terms of end game, it's not what you're looking for. But in terms of but in other way like modes of the game like Overland, uh, some of the easier dungeons like just. The base game dungeons, normal and vet, some of the deal like DLC dungeons, maybe even vet, but not like you know, not the hard mode, not the trifectas, not the anything like that. No trials, you know, PvP battlegrounds. I could see this set being fun, absolutely. Outside of that, not really. Anyway, so update forty hits on October thirtieth, apparently. So get ready for that. Um. I really think that Zenimax really needs to listen to our feedback more. Um, these past few, these past few um, PTS cycles, I think of them a little bad. 
Now, I will admit that I realize they can't listen. Like, just because they don't implement feedback, it doesn't mean that they don't listen to the feedback. I do, and I'm going to get into probably a video about that, just because you know, I, I think it's kind of important to address. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. really appreciate every, all of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and find yourself coming back. Um, and I will see you in the next one.